In this video, I wanna give you a little breakdown, a technical breakdown of all the gear we used to make our last live stream using multiple cameras and also going live to multiple social media channels at the same time, so let's get into it. Now the reason we even did this in the first place is because we were supposed to be doing this demo live in front of an audience at the photography show, which is obviously an annual event that happens here in the UK. Obviously with what's going on in the world, 2020 has been a bit upside down, so the photography show went virtual this year. And to give people at home the fullest experience, if you like, I wanted to be able to go live with multiple cameras and being able to comment live as well and answer your questions on the fly. It's something the whole team thoroughly enjoyed. We really enjoy doing it and it's something that we will do more in the future. So if you haven't already seen the live stream, I'll leave a link in the description below or you can just click the card up there. But let's talk about how we did it. All right, so let's start with possibly one of the most important pieces of hardware in this setup and that is this. This is the Blackmagic A10 Mini Pro. This is the device that lets us plug in all of our camera angles via a normal HDMI and then that condenses that into just a single USB out here. You plug that into your computer or your laptop, just my normal USB, and then that will send that signal out to the internet. Before I go any further, I have made a little blueprint here for you to follow along. You can download this, this is in the description box below, and this blueprint should hopefully help you see exactly where all of the pieces of hardware are connecting to and from. Now, as you can see from this blueprint, we chose actually not to have four cameras, we only have three cameras. And that's because the fourth input is not another camera, it is my tether screen, it's this laptop here. This is especially important, obviously, as a photographer doing a demo, because when I take a photograph, I want you guys at home to see exactly what I'm looking at. So that's why, instead of a fourth camera, this is plugged into the A10 Mini Pro on input four right here. So again, Cassie has the ability sat at her desk. She is also known as a vision mixer. That's what they would call it in the industry. She has the ability using these buttons at the front, one, two, three, four. She has the ability to cut to any of the camera angles she wants. You can see that she can see all four camera angles and she can see what's about to go live and what is going live in the top right hand corner. If you wanna learn even more about exactly how the camera angles work and how they change, then click the card up there and that will take you to an overview video that I made recently talking about this and exactly how you connect these up. So the main camera, the one dead center, the one that was unmanned, that was a 5D Mark IV with the 24105 lens on. The camera that was right at the very back, getting the behind the scenes shot, that was just a GoPro 4. And then the last camera was the GH5, which is this camera here with the 12 to 35 millimeter lens. That was actually manned, that camera, that was operated on by my friend Mike, and he was able to then give us all different types of shots rather than just three static shots. It made it a little bit more uh, exciting that there's a bit of movement in there as well. The next thing I wanna draw your attention to on the blueprint is uh, what's on top of a couple of these cameras. So they're mobile phone clips with our mobile phones on and they are doing something extremely important. On the phones is an app installed called ATEM Tally. What this app is doing is it's telling the camera operators exactly when their specific camera angle is live and when it's not live. So for example, when Cassie hits, let's say two, that will take camera two into preview mode. Then that means that phone will shine green. That means that camera operator knows not to move around too much, that that camera is about to go live. Then when Cassie hits the button cut, that will then take that camera live and then that phone will go red. That means the camera operator knows not to do anything too silly, can't move the camera too much because their angle is now live. When Cassie then presses another camera and takes that live, that will then send the original phone off. That will take it to a grayed out screen. That then signals to that specific operator that they can then move the camera again. They can change it up, get a new angle. It's such a tiny signal, but it makes such a big difference because without this, my camera operator, Mike, for example, wouldn't know if his camera was live or if he weren't, which means that he can't experiment with his camera. He can't zoom in quickly to get a nice close-up because he might think, well, I can't do that. 
in case my camera is live, in case the world will see me do a quick zoom and that doesn't look very good. Because if it just went all of a sudden red, it'd be like, oh, there'd be no warning for the camera operator. So that's why when Cassie presses number two, for example, it goes into preview. Then when she hits cut, then it goes live. So Cassie has to press two buttons before that camera technically goes live. So Alex, if you come back, back over to the A10 and we'll do that once, we'll show that once more. So oh, when, awesome. when Mike is in preview here, that is when his light will be green. So if you then pan back Alex, his light should be green. And back here again Alex. If we now take him live, now we go back to here, we can now see that Mike's phone has now turned red, so it's all talking to each other. The way it's able to talk to each other is the, uh, the mobile phones are connected via Wi-Fi and they are talking specifically to the A10 Mini via a specific IP address. So on the app, they can punch in the specific IP address of the A10 and then that means that any changes in the A10 will then change on the phones. But this has to be connected to the internet in order for it to actually send the signal to the phone. So you have to plug in a ethernet cable, as you can see again on the blueprint, just a simple ethernet cable from the back of the Blackmagic into the router. And that will then send that signal to the phones, telling them when they are live and when they're not live. Very simple signal, but it makes a massive massive difference. Okay, so that's all of the visual side of things. So let's now move on briefly to audio. So for the audio, we are using the Rode Wireless Goes. I absolutely love these, they're fantastic. We don't need to worry about any trailing cables running from my shirt all the way down and into the back of the Blackmagic A10. We can use these Wireless Goes and then that frees us up to move around and do what we need to do. We had one on me and we had one on Stephen and Stephen had one because he was calling out all of the comments that were coming in so that we were able to answer them as quick as possible rather than me trying to go to the machine myself. We had Stephen there also calling out the comments and making sure that there was no technical difficulties. But so the receiver was plugged into again, the back of the Blackmagic. The Blackmagic has two mic inputs. They can also be converted to line-ins if you're plugging in speakers. And then Cassie could then from the desk, she can then turn the volume up and down. If uh, I'm too quiet, then she can bring the volume up so that it matches the level of say Steven, for example. The actual lapels we were using, which is the one I'm using right here, is a Rode SmartLav Plus with a converter so that it can work in the wireless go because these lapels are originally designed for iPhones. Okay, the last step where it all comes together, we're taking all of the signals from all four of our inputs, um, all the signals from the audio from mine and Steven's microphone, all of that um, signal is going from the USB out on the back. That is going via a Tether Tools USB-C cable that's going across the room over to Steven's machine and connecting into the iMac via USB. And we're using a service called Restream to take the broadcast live. If you don't know what Restream is, Restream is a service that allows you to simultaneously broadcast your live stream to multiple social media platforms at the same time. You can go live to 30 plus different social media channels out there. Obviously I don't have 30 plus social medias. So we ended up going live to not only my Facebook, not only my YouTube, not only my Twitter, but we were also going live to the Photography Show's Facebook page. We were going live to Pixapro's Facebook page. We were going live to uh, Pixapro's YouTube channel as well. We were doing all of that at the same time via Restream. So to show you briefly how Restream works, this is the dashboard. You can see here from our last live stream, we've got all of the places that I went live to last time. So we can see uh, PixPro, my Twitter account, Photography Show's Facebook page, uh, Essential Photos Facebook page, and my Facebook page. So we're gonna add also my YouTube channel in just to show you how easy it is to add more than one channel. So if I go to add channel, I uh, go down to uh, YouTube events, connect to YouTube events, then select your username and then hit allow. Now you can either go live right now or you can uh, schedule one of your upcoming YouTube streams and connect it to this. So I've already gone ahead and made a just a dummy stream on my YouTube account so that when I go to this drop down, it can see my already set up test stream and then hit save. And then we can see it's now added my 
YouTube channel there at the bottom. So I can now go live to all of these guys. So if I then go to update title, so here is where you title your stream. This is where you put the description of your stream. If you then were to click update all, it will then, as it, would, as it says, it updates everything so that when you go live, you don't need to worry about writing the same title and the same description for all of these multiple platforms. It will do it all for you. Now there's a couple of ways you can actually go live. You can either go live using uh, special streaming software like OBS or you can actually use Zoom. All you would just need to do is copy these settings to your OBS or your Zoom and then that will then talk to each other. But if you don't have that, then you can use their built-in Restream Studio, which is actually what we use. We didn't actually use any fancy software platform like OBS, and there's a very good reason why we opted to use Restream's built-in Restream Studio. So let me show you. So enter Live Studio, and this is the dashboard for Restream Live. So all you would need to do is you would connect your camera. So if I enable camera there, you can see this is just a webcam that's built onto this laptop here that I'm using, but if you had your Black Magic connected, then you would go here to settings and you would go to the video input and you would change that to Black Magic. And then that would send everything from here all the way down the cable and into Restream. Another reason why we choose to use Restream Studio is because in this mode, when someone makes a comment, you can push that on screen. You can push that live as well. Because of that one feature is the, is the reason why we opted to go for Restream Studio. We really liked the idea that we could push comments on screen so that it makes it feel even more interactive. As soon as we start pushing comments on screen, that encourages other people to start comment so that they can see their name actually on, on screen as well. And let me show you how to do that. So let's pretend that this, uh, this is a comment that's come in here. If I then click show, you can see that that displays actually on there. So if you get a whole list of comments, and this again, this is what Stephen's job was. This is why we needed a second person to do this rather than trying to shoot this myself and then come to the chat and see what it's doing. Stephen was able to see a comment. If I'm in between moving some lights, he would say, We've got a comment here, Tommy, and then he would then click that and then that would put it live. What's really nice about this chat box as well is because I'm going live to multiple uh, platforms at the same time, but this chat box is displaying the comments from all of those social medias combined. So you don't have to have YouTube open and Twitter open and Facebook open just to see the, all the comments. All of the comments coming in right here is from all the social medias combined. As well as that, it also has captions here. So I did mention that you could, at the start of the live stream, that you could get 20% off using the code Tommy20 at the checkout to get 20% off of any restream plan. And I am giving this to you now as well here in this video. If you do want to take advantage of this, again, just type in Tommy20 at the checkout and you can get 20% off of any of restream's plans. So for the captions ahead of time, I could put anything I want in. I could say, uh, set up one and then put uh, overhead lighting. So then when I go to add caption, I then click show and that is going to put that live. That's gonna push that out live on screen. This is what's great about Restream Studios. You don't need any fancy um, software like OBS. Going into the graphics tab, I can also have my logo on screen. That can stay on screen throughout the whole broadcast, which is really nice. Um, Another thing I like about it is you can also load videos into this as well. So you can play videos during your stream just with a click of a button. Now, before I had Restream Studio, if I wanted to play a video on my stream, I'd have to have one of my laptops connected to the Blackmagic so that I could then queue up that video to play or have that graphic ready to go. And the problem with that is that means I've lost one of my inputs. That means that I can't have a camera because I've got to have a laptop plugged into it because I want to play a video. So if like me, you want to play an intro, you can just simply load it up and then hit show. And when that video ends, then that will just go back to our broadcast. So when that hits zero, we then cross fade and then that's when we begin the broadcast. You can make your own like I did, but they've, also, they've got ones like this one that's uh, already preloaded into the software, which again is really cool. It's always nice to have a little countdown. Just gives people a chance to, when they see the notification, it gives people a chance to come in if there's like a minute or two 
um, buffer so that you can actually have some people there when you start your broadcast. What's also so nice again about Restream is it records your stream as well. So I can go here to my recordings and this was the last live stream we did and I can just hit download record. I can record just the audio if I want to, I could play it here or I could download the recording as well. And I'm actually using this recording to help show you the behind the scenes in some of the shots that you've already seen so far. That's a really cool feature. Another thing that I really like about it is the analytics. So you can see exactly how well your live stream did specifically on certain platforms as well. You can see what done best on which platform. So I can see my last live stream got 1,188 views. That was the, that's the views just during the stream. That's not obviously in total, that's just during the stream. I can see here at a glance that 80% of the viewers came from my YouTube channel and then the rest come from the other channels that were also connected as well. So that's just a very brief overview of exactly how we were able to do our live stream. Uh, I'm sorry if that took a lot longer than I thought it would take, um, but it's, it's a lot of moving parts involved in making this work. So um, I'm really pleased with it. I'm really proud of it. It's very technical, but we've already made a couple of tweaks which we're gonna do for the next live stream. So we're really excited to do another live stream for you. And if you do have any questions about any of this stuff that you've seen here today, or you've got a suggestion about a live stream setup that you would like to see, then do let me know in the comments below. One thing that we would like to try next time is do a shoot and do edit the image live on screen and take Q and A's as well. Let me know if you would be interested in that. And that's about it for this video, guys. Thank you ever so much for watching. If you liked it, please make sure you hit the like or share button or subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. And as always, I will see you again next time. Cheers guys, bye-bye.